Poker's newest high roller series is in full swing. This is the Poker Go Cup, featuring the best of the best converging upon Las Vegas, Nevada to battle in the biggest tournaments in the world. Welcome back to the Poker Go studio for final table coverage of event number six. It is a $25,000 buy-in. Come and join us at the break desk. He is Brent Hanks. I am Jeff Platt. And Brent, you said yesterday that Aliam Shurovich can be caught in the race for the cup. Do you stand by that today? I mean, I'm standing barely on one leg. Uh, Ali got, here's the thing, Jeff. He yeah. runs good, plays great mm. every time we see him. Now, he's eliminated towards the bubble of this thing. And every player at this final table is barely within reach. That's how good Ali is running. It's going to take something miraculous today in order to catch him. He got it in yesterday with a pair against an open-ended straight draw. Can you believe that the straight draw came in on the river? No, I mean, it's, maybe we got to review the tape. Yeah, what is going on yeah. at the Poker Go studio? Let yeah. us take a look at our series standings. And Ali, I'm sure of it, his name is still on top. 423 points for him. Dylan Lindy is in second. Alex Foxen in third. David Coleman and Jake Schindler round out our final five. And Brent, Jake Schindler shows up for the 25K and wins it and is now in contention for the cup. Yeah, the snake, huh? Yeah. Jake Schindler. Uh, he has to do something in this 50K. I mean, this is a no-brainer, right? I mean, we got two events left. If he doesn't cash final table, the 50K, mm -hmm. he's out, uh, along with a lot of these people on this list. You know, he's also in the mix. That would be David Coleman, just mm -hmm. missed making his fourth final table in six events. Let's take a look at his run, Brent. A fourth place finish in event number one, sixth place in event number four, third place in event number five. What have you made of his run, his his introduction, really, to our Poker Go majors? It came out of nowhere. Yeah. I, I had no idea who David Coleman was prior to the Poker Go Cup series, and now it, remember my name. David Coleman is a star, and he is here to stay. You can tell every time he plays. He is hungry. He's out there to compete with the best. He thinks that he might be one of the best. Daniel Negreanu calls him the new kid on the block. A lot of respect for David Coleman from some of our regular high rollers here. He gets it in with ace queen against John Reardon's ace jack. The ace jack does get there and Reardon has a massive chip lead. Let's take a look at our leaderboard for the event number six final table. It is brought to you by Zenny. John Reardon with one point seven million in chips. Thomas Winters in second, Anuj Agarwal in third, Kerry Katz, Jason Kuhn, Steve Zalatow round out our final table. Brent, what stands out to you when you look at this leaderboard? I'm looking down towards the bottom. Of course, the eagle, he's always uh, you love soaring, got his talents dug in deep, but it's Jason Kuhn, it's Kerry Katz. I really think that someone there is going to rise from the ashes and they're going to give Reardon all they can handle. How do you count out Jason Kuhn? You can't. You can't. Yeah. You have any nerd focus on you? Uh, I just think maybe. Let me. Oh. Yeah. Right there. Oh. Shall we? Oh, I, I think we shall. Okay. Th uh, incoming. 324K up top. Six players remain in the hunt for the title of event number six. It is Alina Jean and Maria Ho on the call. Your final table coverage starts right now. Hello everyone and welcome to Poker Go's continuing coverage of the Poker Go Cup. From inside, where else? The Poker Go studio at Aria Resort and Casino in lovely and searing, scorching Las Vegas, Nevada and the temperature outside. Commensurate with that inside as talent descends upon the purple felt for the final table of our 25K No Limit Hold'em. Ali Najat joined by Maria Ho once more and familiar and unfamiliar faces gather around from the original 36 entries. Aliam Shervich and Alex Foxen, top five players in the quest for the Poker Go Cup, eliminated. Eighth and ninth, respectively. David Coleman out of there as well. And your chip leader coming in is the man who dealt the final blow to Imshirovich, who is on the outside looking in on this final table. 1.7 million for Mr. John Reardon, followed by Thomas Winters and Anuj Agarwal, lesser known to our community. But of course, everybody can recognize that get up, the black hat, the black jacket, and the all business effect of Kerry Katz, El Jefe, as we've christened him, joining everyone here for event number six, where $324,000 once again await our champion. 
but $45,000 is on tap for our sixth place finisher. And Maria, every time we kick off one of these events and we've got that score playing, I feel like Gerard Butler in Gladiator. I mean, send some tigers into the booth. Let's do this. Oh, here? Oh, gotcha, Sorry. my bad. 30,000. John Reardon kicks things off with ace queen, min raising to 30K. I keep hearing in the broadcast that Ali and Maria play cash games somewhere. And I want to find out where they play cash games, go there and comment every time they make a bad play, <laughs> questionable decision. I want over. my revenge. What are, they, are they criticizing your play? No, I can, they said some nice things. But they criticized the play that was really pretty bad against Eli. Oh. I miss, oh. I miss, you started I with 385? But, uh, uh, you know, I mean, I would explain what I was doing I and why, but it will just annoy me. Plus the ante? But it, yeah. it wasn't. Sure. I knew I was getting good pot odds, but he knew it, and he kept betting anyway, so it just seemed like he must yeah. know what he's doing. Early shots fired by the <laughs> Eagle Steve Zolotow, Maria, in reference to some of our critiques, which we tend to be soft-handed about at best, and certainly we have all of the respect in the world for those gladiators who get out in competition and allow us to enjoy some top-level oh. poker, some of which we will certainly see here tonight. A king-high board is in favor of Jason Kuhn, who defended his big against this ace-queen and flops check. top pair. A check call of the downsized 20K follow-through from Reardon, and then a second check from Jason on this turn. Let's add Steve to the live game group chat, you know, so he can find us. Bum hunt. Yes. Give him that opportunity. Yes. <laughs> Come on down, Eagle. Reardon deciding if he wants to check back or continue to fire. Maybe trying to attack some of those weaker middle pair, bottom pairs from the flop. Kuhn, again, check call 75,000. Now a 10 of clubs on the river. Queen Jack gets there. Reardon with that queen in his hand may use it to some effect to try to fire this third barrel in hopes of it getting through. Does look like Kuhn has a semi-strong hand, but of course, defending from the big blind makes his range a little bit wider, could be a little weaker. Kuhn. Yeah. Unfortunate. Facing a big bet of 245K King now. King good. King very good. Other card very bad. Very bad. 10 seconds. Shot clock, of course, in effect here. Each player uh. provided six time banks at the onset. I think Kuhn, when he says his other card is really bad, means that if he had maybe King Queen or King Jack and blocks that straight, it would make this call maybe a little bit easier, perhaps make him right more often than not. But in this situation. What do you have? Doesn't love his kicker your and. eyes look comfy when you <laughs> bet the reverse, so that scares me. But I don't think you liked your hand until that. You really have Queen Jack? How can you, you see right anything? Me, didn't you? Looks like Reardon I have a seat. three in my hand. A three is a really bad card. You get a base three suited, right? Blew a bubble. It's a fun hand to bluff with. That as well, just thinking of the fact that he also never. blocks maybe some potential. Never fold King Jack. I never Bluffs. fold yep. King Eight. Never fold King Queen. Loving this opportunity, by the way, to get insight into Kuhn's thought process on the end here. Reardon's probably really happy <laughs> that he has as much coverage as he does. Feels like. A little bit longer, Jakun might be able to look into his soul. Yeah. And another time bank. 
being expended here. Those time banks are very valuable, Ali. So the fact that he's taking this much time well. does make the call. Oh, okay. yeah. nope. Well worth the investment for Jason Kuhn, who picks off the chip leader to start his session, and it was a meaningful decision given that he was fifth in chips. Coming into that hand now, a boost up to 765,000, leaves him tied for second. Yeah, and kind of a statement moment there, Maria, yeah. for the West Virginia grad. The courage of his conviction going with what he felt was the right decision. And I don't know if you heard El Jefe say, clearly he hasn't played with you enough, meaning Reardon is prone to bluffing, perhaps. Or <laughs> not, uh, I guess, not aware that Jason Kuhn's the wrong customer. Not afraid to make a big decision. That is certainly true of Jason Kuhn, who's played some of the biggest cash game pots in history. Yeah, it's fine firsthand. It's a fine firsthand. And he didn't stumble upon those over $31 million in career tournament eight. earnings by accident. <laughs> plan A didn't work. <laughs> of all of the impressive accolades among the players here at the table, let us not sleep on the spectacular length of the Fu Manchu that Zalatau has brought to the affair. I mean, that is, you're talking about a serious handlebar. It's not just that, it's his commitment oh. to it because this is oh, yeah. a long time look for him. Oh yeah. But I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm approaching the high water mark here. I mean, there's not a lot of trimming that took place during quarantine, if I had to guess. Meanwhile, two eights for Kuhn who limps round two against Reardon and advantage Jason once more on the Jack-9-3 board. Two over cards, draw check. 20. And John trying to pick up what he imagines could be some dead money. Just trying to get some of his chips back from the last hand a little bit at a time, but oh. definitely not gonna work on this street. Jason gonna check call and decide. Not a scary turn for him, the six of hearts. And now it becomes a bit of a guessing game as to whether or not Reardon actually hit a jack or a nine. We'll see whether or not Reardon's become a little more gun shy against his opponent. The answer would appear to be yes, as he checks back queen high and does not improve. Not the greatest river though for the two eights, right Maria? Yeah, but you know, it's kind of nice that unlikely for your opponent to have perhaps 8-7, which they might have bet the flop with. 15. And maybe some of those straight combos would be more prone to raising pre-flop, the queen-10, king-10 variety. Yeah, definitely. And here, king, queen. Yeah, and here just this tiny bet as a block bet. Sure. Gets the job done. Two for two is Jason Kuhn. A great start to his afternoon here. Top class. Quick peek at the tournament format brought to you by PokerCoaching.com. We've mentioned 25K no limit hold'em. We haven't mentioned that everybody started with 125,000 in starting chips as they did in the previous 25K event. 40 minute levels, two re-entries were permitted and of course, Shot clock and time bank rules apply. Two man show thus far, although Thomas Winters 30. will enter the fray and do so in an unfortunate time. Ace 10 suited will find himself up against Ace King suited. Anuj Agarwal. From Los Angeles, 75, professional poker player with over 1.1 million in career tournament earnings and a bracelet to his name back in 2019. Took down a six-handed No Limit Hold'em event, which is exactly where he finds himself here. So certainly capable of navigating these waters adeptly. High stakes PLO player. Winters has a pretty hand. Doesn't want to let go of it just yet. Drops in another 45,000 and eight high 
Not what these players had in mind. Advantage Agarwal with both the Ace-King high and the backdoor club option. Lion's share of the equity and position belong to him as Winters checks it over. 35. Somewhat compulsory follow through here on the heels of the three bet, 35K the number. Yeah, fairly small bet, but for Winters, just two over cards, no backdoor flush draw possibility here. So not really sure if he will decide to continue. Feels like you and I would have assumed he would have released in this spot, but instead stays sticky and does not improve on the turn. Can't say the same for Agarwal, who picks up the nut flush draw. Yeah, especially because you were faced with a three bet pre, so up against a three betting range that is probably heavily favored towards value in this spot, given all the ICM and whatnot. You know, most people would have let that go on the flop, but here Agarwal has a lot of reason to continue if he feels like he can attack Winter's range. Both stacks part of that middling cluster between Reardon and Zolotow to start this hand. And Anuj fires 100K as a second barrel, and that will get the job done. I mentioned him as a professional poker player, but obviously dabbles in law and real estate does Anuj. And I'm not sure, can one dabble in law? <laughs> or is the poker the dabbling? What is the balance? He brought some SoCal flavor to the affair, didn't he? Like when you look up at him, he does have the affect of all the guys that we used to sit around tables uh, at Commerce and Bike A hundred percent. I was just thinking that. The shades especially. The shades, like. very much so. Very West Coast. Meanwhile, his Queen Jack offsuit open is flatted by Katz's sixes. And Ace hits the muck behind Carey. Over to Thomas Winters, who actually finished sixth in event six at the U.S. Poker Open for $59,000. Got himself over 850k in career tournament earnings. A Texan. Not interested in the nine deuce, understandably, so it'll be heads up, and this time Agarwal lacks position. Similar looking board, 8-5 deuce. Six is in front with 100K in the middle. Check. Nice check by Agarwal. Realizing that when Katz flats his open from under the gun plus one, that this range is pro this board will probably favor his range. Yeah, right there. Two jacks? What? Yeah, two jacks right there, right out of the gates. Good read. <laughs> <laughs> Agarwal's check fold to the 75K. Draw some speculation from Jason Kuhn, but not quite as good as two jacks as we look at the Warriors entering the Coliseum. Alex Foxen, who's in that top five category in the Poker Go Cup. Some BYO lunch for Kuhn, it looked like there. Steve Z. Under airport suspicion, walking through security with not a carry-on to be seen. Huh? Down to 60 bigs. Who? You? Yeah. Should be up to 60 bigs. I feel like yeah. there should be a charcoal filter <laughs> insert. I can get by on that. In I can get by on it. That little we'll throat area for Reardon. It's yeah, like I a COVID <laughs> filtration. <laughs> you just pull it up. Last one on the table. But hey, I'd take a second again, to be honest. I actually have a hoodie like that. Uh -huh. Is it an N95 hoodie? Pretty much. You put a filter in there, and uh, I've been oh, flying with it. <laughs> right now, is it really designed like, for COVID? Now, if I yeah. get second, I won't be happy. Wow. 
And you bought it off of Instagram, right? <laughs> I almost bought a hazmat suit off of Instagram at the very beginning of the pandemic. I, I've seen some pretty spectacular get-ups. I've seen hermetically sealed bubbles, I've seen gas masks that look like they're from the Cold War. Something to do, fun to do if I win, too. That's true. I don't know if I should be proud of it, but I spent zero dollars on masks the entire quarantine. Not because I wasn't wearing them, but because I just didn't go out and get anything special and just wore what they gave me. <laughs> I think it worked out. I don't think I got it. Now I feel like I should feel lucky you didn't give it to me during all the pre-show work we did <laughs> early on in the pandemic. No, no, no. For I didn't the say WSOP I was out online. there making out Come with on. randos. All right. Did you buy any hand sanitizer during the pandemic? I had hand sanitizer. Thank you. And also this other thing that just barely came out called soap. <laughs> Ace nine for Reardon makes it 30K to go. Zalatau decides now is the time. His nub slides into the middle, 180K. Just about 12 bigs. Does have Reardon pipped here. John decides <laughs> yeah, Ace-9's not going to be in good shape against Steve's way. range here for the extra buck 50. You know, Bows there's out. an old Buddhist saying that the journey of a thousand pots begins with a single pot. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a Zolotov saying. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't Zolotov the name of the fortune teller machine from Big? I think it's Zoltar. Come I knew close. that, but I just really oh. wanted him to be the inspiration behind it. <laughs> he I should have like, been in the machine. I feel like the facial hair is similar, you know? Correct. I, I, I see it. I guess. Can we just call him Steve Zoltar from now on? Ooh, I like be it. amazing, right? Let's have him level up on his nickname. You know, the Eagle was great for while yeah. it lasted. Zoltar. Post USPO without the right. Eagle Trophy, let's it's like a walk. move it along. It's gonna be hard to fold for a third of a blind. Feels like a walk. I think you're just gonna get four three offsuit. No, oh, I'm priced it. Call. Well, you also happen to have King Jack offsuit, Carrie, and your two sixes have slid over a seat to Jason Kuhn. They're probably not driving it. Fifty percent tops. <laughs> what you used to say to me every time? One and seven. Like one and six. One and six. That's like right. Russian roulette. <laughs> Oh, bottom Ooh. set against an open ender. Here's some texture. Backdoor clubs for Cats as well, who checks in this limp pot, blind versus blind. Check and snap call from Carey, who now improves to a pair and an open ender. I think with this wet texture, Jason will probably go a little bit bigger just to offer some protection, charge all of those draws. 80. Story checks out, 80K the number now. Call. Cats again calls. Four neat piles. And now Kuhn fills up as the 10 pairs. Check. Well, Carey's just hoping for a check back and some give up from Kuhn from perhaps a busted straight or flush draw. And Kuhn is just hoping that Katz has at least trip 10s here, if not better to be able to call him with. Straight would seem unlikely having not heard from Cats on the turn, but trip 10 is certainly not an impossibility. And you know, for Cats, because Kuhn just checked his option preflop, can take Ace King pretty safely out of his range. He also does have the King of Spades Probably as not well. Probably queen. Yeah, yeah check the queen. That is true. Certainly could have it like a 10 9 or 10 king. That's not good. Ten. Cats also has the jack of clubs. Alright, good bet. Blocking busted flush draws and ultimately Carrie settles on the right decision. 
as Coons 200K does not get paid. Discipline fold in a blind versus blind spot nah. for carry. Nah. And a red hot start for Jason Kuhn here, Maria. Not what John Reardon wanted to see. He certainly has made his contributions. First two pots of the night, losing to Kuhn. Set of sixes. And Jason, a real threat at any final table he is seated at, but certainly when you give him some breathing room with the kind of stack that he is now cobbled the together. Other cards didn't pair. I'm glad cannot count Jack him didn't out. Pair there. On the no, no, I had King, King Jack. Oh, King Jack. Okay, okay. I thought you said you had two, three pair. I was like, oh, shh. yeah. Good fold. I guess I'll find out. I wouldn't. I wouldn't lie to you. It would be one of the worst lies there. ever. Nah, just because yeah, be four. we see all, Jason. I mean, I still wouldn't have liked it. The no, yeah, the nine comes. I guess you really it'd be hard to put me on a, harder to put me on a straight. Heads up. Another blind versus blind face off between Kuhn and Reardon. Jason 15. flops a nine with the nut kicker. And uh -huh. Uh -huh. His good fold. We'll take it. Good lay down. Big hand. Yeah, I was worried you could have had that hand too. K9. Definitely could add K9. Kuhn has come such a long way since he first burst onto the World Poker Tour stage. I remember meeting him out in South Florida as a young man. Had all the enthusiasm in the world and has followed it up with all the aptitude. Genuine thirst for knowledge, talks poker on a high level. Puts plenty of time in and I think it's worthy of note that while Oftentimes we see the culmination of the efforts. The efforts themselves are hidden from those of us who watch these guys out there playing. And it can be very tempting to presume that there isn't all kinds of discipline, whether it's workout regimens, things that seem more obscure, right? Dietary discipline, sleep habits. I know Jason does the, the ice baths from time to time. All things that you might go, how does that help? How does that you know, carry into it? But when you need the amount of discipline required to succeed in the high stakes poker circuit. Those are 25, 30, 30. And you see the prevalence of a lot of these habits in the most successful players, you begin to to cease to question whether or not it's relevant. Kind of accept it, right? Yeah, and it's just like they say, there's no such thing as an overnight success. And of course, Jason Kuhn definitely putting in a lot of that behind the scenes work that you're talking about. And when you and I first started, we didn't have a lot of the tools, I think, that are available to these guys. And to take nothing away from what they've been able to accomplish, because you still have to make use of those tools. And it's a lot more work now yeah. because they're available. They're looking at specific situations mm -hmm. as far as stack so. sizes are concerned, specific hands, plugging them in, going, did I optimize or not? And you'll be able to see all of those efforts on display in the Poker Masters as the quest for the poker jacket is right around the corner, September 8th through the 19th. You can watch live exclusively on Poker Go. Maybe now that quarantine's over, it's not so around the corner, but time certainly flew, you? it felt like. I didn't know uh, what day of the week okay, it was. Okay, not great. When people are out Sometimes and about. I just get a little, like after I played for a long time, it's hard for me to go back to sleep, hard for me to go to sleep. If, uh, I didn't drink a lot of five. caffeine or anything, it's just my mind races. Yeah. Well, so it's pretty early. We were, you know, yeah, that was great. You get to sleep at like four or five in the morning. So this, you know, what do you do at ten o'clock? Yeah, no, that was great because I uh, there's there's real fast turnarounds, man. King ten opened to thirty five thousand. Coon with Ace Two suited was just going to finish the point. That if you walk down the strip. On any given day these days, you wouldn't know there ever had been a pandemic. It is business as usual here in Las Vegas, for better or for worse. Meanwhile, Ace Jack on the button for Reardon. 
put himself in a pretty good way here, but is he going to try to squeeze? Okay. <laughs> is this Reardon's doppelganger? It's a stick of cotton candy. They're having too much fun in the control room I know, today. I know. I mean, but don't sleep on the cotton candy. Pure sugar, but mm, it's so good. It gets too sticky on your fingers. And we'll see just how sticky these guys are going to be in the face of this 3-bet to 135,000 from Reardon. Yeah, especially being the chip leader with that particular hand with, you know, a raise and a call before him. Definitely a very squeezable spot. Ten seconds. Not sure what Winters is thinking about with this queen four off suit. We'll give you camera time, Thomas. You don't have to force it. I don't really see how Agarwal can continue with this type of hand, especially because of the pressure that Reardon's able to put on them and Jason as well. A dusty hand you have right there. King, queen off? <laughs> Feels like you had king, queen off. Well, the 29-year-old stick of cotton candy gets one through. Former Florida Gator. And as the circuit events proliferated, won the first ever WSOP event played in the state of Florida. Etch that into the annals of history. And Reardon, obviously, keenly aware of Zolotow's stack out there. It's a $27,000 pay jump from sixth to fifth, but it isn't so much just that pay jump, but more the opportunity to get yourself involved in a shot at 324,000 that is gonna create some tight decision-making from those middling stacks, not looking to get involved in a confrontation with the one man who can bust everybody here. Zalatow, meanwhile, needs some confrontations and some spins as he piles on the Cats <laughs> Open. How much is it? With two nines. 200. 210,000. Yeah, with Zalatow stack, mandatory shove there. Cats just doesn't have quite enough to call and too many chips Thank from his own stack to <laughs> try to eliminate Zalatow. Going to pass. The path to a thousand pots, Maria, begins <laughs> with one pot. <laughs> And that is the second time Zalatao has moved all in and taken one down. So many years removed from his days at the Mayfair Club. Some sure, legendary Rick stories that hand. he has to share. His bracelets coming flip against Ace Queen. a couple decades plus ago, 95 and 01, respectively. Kind of cool to see, Maria, a guy like Steve still working his way into final tables, playing against what has to be a huge departure from the type of opposition that he cut his teeth against. Showing that the wily veteran can still navigate these waters. The shops get so much respect. Mm -hmm. We'll see three here. And he decides he's got enough now to not have to spin the wheel. Flatting with Ace Jack. Plus maybe he's got a plan. Yeah, it's definitely one of those things that you know that Reardon is probably going to be opening a pretty wide range. But Zolotel maybe just not wanting to take a high variance spot potentially with a three bet shove here. And gets to be in position post. Agarwal kept it clean, folding ace nine, but he would have had top pair on this board texture. Meanwhile, this unexpected eight four suited for Reardon has turned into an open-ended straight draw against ace high. 35. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> What do you got about like 500, 525? A little, yeah. yeah. Not very desirable for Steve, especially not having a spade. Ends up laying it down. As it turns out, the three bet would have gotten through, but sitting on 18 big, Zolotow elected to 
just flat play a pot. Rare pickup for Reardon. Things suited, haven't started well for him as he came what? in with 1.7. <laughs> now that's, he's got a real hand. Ace 10 suited. Go ahead. But that's the beauty of coming in as the chip leader Injects is suited. that you can withstand <laughs> and have a little bit of buffer if things should not go your way. And you can still recover Ooh. pretty easily. Well, I'd add to it, it's not just being the chip leader, but the overwhelming chip leader as he was. So plenty of buffer indeed. Now Zalatau again with a playable one. King, queen, offsuit. Yeah, I can't say Zalatau, you know, has had the easiest of That's spots in this hand and the hand before in terms of deciding between calling or shoving over Reardon's open. If it were someone else's open at the table, Zolotow probably play a little bit more snug, but Reardon, of course, expected to be more aggressive given his chip position. In this corner, wearing a pink hoodie and weighing 182 pounds. <laughs> Take the I'm over. Sure 182. <laughs> Take the over. <laughs> Not flush draw on the jack high board for Reardon. I mean, he's like 6'3 six, six, or something. Oh, yeah. Sure. He <laughs> checks it over to Steve. Zolotow with a quick check back. Gets a free Ooh. pull at the turn and spikes top pair. Draws dead, though. Reardon with a whole lot of hand. What Wonder whether or not... 174? He wants oh. to check another street. Yep. Has to imagine know, Steve's so drawing so dead. I know. You think I like you way more. I, I did my whole life. 185 has like been my walk-around weight until the last like three or four years. 40? I went and got, went and got light. That's light. And beneath. Slim. Yeah, I don't mind it. I feel, I feel great. All that pink fabric is a man ecstatic at what he's seeing. A bet from Zolotow, really 40K. Like Definitely lying in wait. And you can't blame Zolotow for trying to offer some protection for his top pair. Doesn't okay. have a diamond as backup. Could definitely get called by worse, but falling into 80. this trap. Unknowingly. I expect it not. I mean, this oh, the min for check raise, though. This is just savage. Ooh. You know when you see orcas <laughs> and they swim up to the beach, and I'm pretty sure they're hungry, but they don't just eat the seal. They fling it around and toss it in the air before finishing it off. That's what we're witnessing here. Just toying with them. Absolutely. Of course, Zolotow makes the call. You know, if another diamond came off, maybe Zolotow would have been able to get away from it. Here, though, 260K in the pot. He's only got 140K behind. Just around half pot. Not sure he would be able to get away from it. And Reardon asks for the rest here. And if you don't get away from it, Zolotow, I just want you to know that no criticism on my part, at least, if you call. What, are you trying to suggest <laughs> that I have criticism? No, no, I'm just, I just want him to know <laughs> that I will have nothing but empathy for I'll take it a step further. <laughs> Steve, if you call here, know that I too would be headed for the exits in this spot. That's a pretty good line, isn't it? Extension. I have a very good hand that feels like it's no good. We've all been in that spot. But with just 140K left, will he choose to make this the moment? Will he walk away from the investment? It's just that that min check raise feels so valuey. And with it, though. Zalatau's instincts were correct as he becomes the first casualty here. Finishing in sixth place. Collecting forty-five thousand dollars, but, cash, but I'm happy. I didn't that, that's your that's your that. that's your average. Maybe. Thank you. Also. Good luck, gentlemen. Yep. Play well. You're the, Collecting you're the a little nightmare tonight. Game. <laughs> About that last hand. Seventy-six plus or seventy-six specific. Seventy-six. Lots uh, of respect being shown. Plus. All right, there you to go. To the veteran. <laughs> See you next time, Zoltar. 
Yes, Zoltar. Torture Make it stick. Incredible. We gotta, yeah, we gotta use it in repetition. We you do. didn't take You're me right. in the back. We have to inculcate the audience. <laughs> so Reardon, a nice he's little been, bump here, gets himself back to his yeah. original 1-7 range that he came he in bracelets with. Bracelets and like Chinese and I'm like, what? <laughs> and now would be a moment to give a Chinese shout out to Benjamin limit. Locke, who's Holden. out there <laughs> streaming. Took some initiative to tweet and advise that I am an imbecile when it comes to movie actors because I conflated 300 and Gladiator and said mm. Gerard Butler was the man from Gladiator when we know that it was Russell Crowe. That bad. Wow. Right. Oopsie. I should have corrected you on that one, actually. You hung me out to dry. Honestly, I think I just make the wrong assumption your that hand, you're usually right. And when you say He's something, kind of it's true and there's validity Very behind close. it and it's well researched. Well, then how come when I bet <laughs> you don't just fold all the time? <laughs> Why are you always looking me up? <laughs> yeah, you're right. That was Picking me uh, off. No, I think Where's that credibility problem. when I need it? <laughs> Threw me off that he had to go back look at it like four times. Again. In the booth, <laughs> all the credibility. On the felt, not so much. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. Some people do, but it was just that one. Jack 10 for Agarwal. Doesn't want to get in there. I feel like Maria's chips might might find their way in with a little jack tan, offsuit or not. What do you think? Yeah, potentially. Well, looks like it was a good decision. Two kings for Kuhn on the button, no less. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like he's going to get any customers, although who knows? Deuce three suited for Thomas Winters. It feels like Winters is kind of just itching to get involved. <laughs> you know, I, looking up at him, it does feel like he wants to play. He's a little bit frustrated. Now an ace high board, not a spade to be found. Check. And for Kuhn, no club. But he will fire. And an easy pick up there. Two kings, Tommy. Wow. Jason What are Kuhn. those stacks on, Gary? And Winters, 30s. very close. On a nickname like basis, 500 and change. Tommy. Is Tommy really a nickname? <laughs> the man's name is Thomas. <laughs> I would hope that if we're going to give him a nickname, cluttered. it would be something other Thanks, than Tommy. To be honest, I don't think I would even call 10, someone named Michael Mike if I forget. didn't know him, though. <laughs> you know, sometimes Never some people forget. don't like being called a shortened version of their name. What's that, man? reason. You almost what? got by. <laughs> What's that, Raya? <laughs> What do people? Okay, how do Oliver, I shorten? Okay, how do I Oliver. shorten Maria? I have never had a nickname complete. for my name until. Oh, you've had nicknames. <laughs> I can't. I can't. <laughs> not say an I'm on okay, air. not a shortened, <laughs> abbreviated version. Maybe okay. we focused less on your first <laughs> name when we made our nicknames. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's all love. I do. I Even mean, though when people overhear it, they look upon us as though we're in a domestically, verbally <laughs> abusive relationship. But. Listen, this is how I got my thick skin prior to playing poker. It's from all of the abuse I got in high school for my last name. Oh, it didn't start in high school. It had to have pre predated high But it was more school. innocent, though. In elementary school, it was like, ho, 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 Merry Christmas. But then in high school, it got oh, a little. Right. A we little figured out that Santa was the only dictionary way to play on off me. It. Yeah, exactly. Ace, queen, eight here. We got a confrontation on our hands as the blind level bumped to 10 and 20,000. Kuhn with the goods, ace on the flop, top pair. Agarwal out there with middle pair. Gonna take one street off and hope to improve, but not the best board for second pair. And maybe this card helps that queen nine find its way out of here, Kuhn with top two. Two flush draws out there, some Broadway possibilities. So not going to be cheap, it doesn't look like. Was it a buck and a quarter? It was indeed, and good clean fold there from Agarwal. You got it through. <laughs> got top two through. <laughs> is there anybody more poker. honest in poker than Jason Kuhn? Like, if you had to pick the person we're going to put on the 
leaderboard for honest that, poker right? players? I mean, so far today, definitely nobody else. Oh, you think I it's can, just can, today? Is that no, what you think? No, I'm just saying that he has been very honest today. He's been honest about everything since I met him. I'm just saying, though, it's not a, a prerequisite to be honest at the poker tables about your hands. No, of course not. But I think there's something exemplary about it that he's willing to let people know, especially in this format, when we know that a half hour removed on a delay, uh, anybody that is streaming the event can find out where they were at. And Jason certainly doesn't feel as though he's incapable of... You know, navigating waters moving forward with that information being distributed early. You know what I mean? It's uh, just kind of one of those things. How often do you have to change the filter on your hoodie? <laughs> um, I think it's something like 10 to 15 uses. So you can wear it 10 to 15. What is a use? What if you play like a 30-hour so session? How many uses is yeah, that? Yeah, I think the filter is, I think a use is probably an 8 to 10-hour duration. Feels like you don't have a firm finger on the pulse of this. <laughs> no, because I honestly am so OCD and so much of a germaphobe, I pretty much change it every time I use it. I spend a lot of money on these filters, let me tell you. Oh, so you went off on Purell. You were on eBay oh. getting gouged. Oh, I mean, if your <laughs> if your local store ran out of Purell, it was probably because I came through there. You were a hoarder. Unbelievable. I had to borrow toilet paper from my next door neighbor in yeah. the beginning of the pandemic. That was not something I could get my hands on. Had you ever borrowed anything I mean, I from that neighbor before? You can't really borrow toilet paper, can you? <laughs> Please don't give it back. <laughs> Just keep it. <laughs> Round two between Agarwal and Kuhn here. Ace, nine, deuce. Top pair for Anuj, and he'll bet 25,000 as a follow-up to the 40K open on the button. Kuhn not interested in taking one uh, off no, with King High and taken. <laughs> a weak diamond. Nice hand. Where'd you have? I had ace. Did you? Yeah. You give honesty, you get honesty in yeah. return. Yeah, feeling kings again. Like, this is a, this is a silly little run I'm having. <laughs> You're like, I gotta go for it. I gotta. <laughs> king ten. Mm, it's just king six. I just oh. had a huge hand every hand. I went kings to ace king back to back. Jack nine off suit in the small for Jason. He'll limp in. Very playable for Kuhn, somewhat connected. Reardon has the type of hand where certainly if your opponent is limping in from the small blind, you can go one of two ways with and decides to check back his option. Got shot wheel draw on the paired flop for Reardon. Takes his stab with a min bet. And Kuhn lays it down. See, I'm guilty of looking across at a guy and being like, okay, really? You have an ace? And like, maybe you have the four, but let me just check raise and find out. Like, I'm that reckless guy. Like ICM suicide, here I come. <laughs> I wouldn't mind doing that with something a little more middling than a jack high. You know, jack high can almost be good, so maybe you don't really need to bluff that. But like an eight this high, is, uh, let's do it. Way. Let's see. Let's check raise and take right. the temperature. King high, check call. Queen high, it. check call. But eight high, seven high. Yeah, a lot high. of these take hits. <laughs> I don't think Maybe those jack highs are as durable as you No, want no, no, them to no. Be. They're, they're definitely not, which is why I think yeah, Jason folded. But uh, I think 
There's some hands that you have almost no chance. I miss those gangster plays <laughs> that we used to see a little bit more often. People are too smart now. One of them. Definitely. I'll leave it aside. Then. I don't know which one. King Jack for cats. You see it? <clears throat> Picks up Winters, who will defend his big with the 9-5 suited. Flops a gut shot straight draw against top pair, does Thomas. He's got backdoor hearts as well. Buck 10 in the middle. Winters leads it off with a check. check. Oh, and Katz with a check back, Maria. I like it. Just <laughs> you're, you're able to potentially get your opponent to bet into you this way with a lot of inferior hands. Looks like Winters is reaching. Yep. Not to say that he may not have peeled one off right. with the 9-5 and the backdoor hearts, but Katz also balancing his check back range on the flop. Now earns a 50K lead, 100. which he min raises. Taking a page out of the John Reardon book, but Winter's stack is much deeper than Zoltar's was. And a very clear and comfortable value raise for Katz on the turn and now Winters might be thinking, hey, I'm a little invested. I have a little bit of equity, but thinks better of it. We need a one of the cards is like crease. You have something? Yeah, you're beat. If you folded you were beat. Gray, blue, whatever, I don't know which eight no good. How's that black? El Jefe, yeah, 11 on the all time like money list, Rio, yeah. over $31 million. <laughs> and I know you've played quite a bit with them. What was the most recent opportunity you had to play with Kerry? Right. I, uh, I mean, maybe this wasn't the most recent opportunity, but it was the most memorable one for me. Um, Kerry and I made the final table of the high roller 25K at Commerce. But then used to work like nine out of 10 times. Six months before the pandemic. Okay. Maybe a little more. Okay. Um, I knocked him out, and I ended up winning it. So thank you, Carrie, for your chips. Well, here are some memorable moments so far from the Poker Go Cup. Sean Perry bringing some flavor, as did Ali Mshirovich, who apparently has brought hoodies for everyone. Double six shooters from Kuhn. And they're having fun out there, man. That's the, that's the thing I love to see. Savril, a fixture. In the studio, Bill Klein, Dylan Lindy, Bill Jordan Christos. Oh, puppies. Puppers. I didn't know Ali had a dog. Must be a new pickup. <laughs> Being told that it's a golden doodle puppy named Gohan. And from my experience with golden doodles, Ali, you'll never find an animal that needs more attention than that, as we remind everyone that... One of our sponsors, Zenny, is eyewear for everyone. Maybe we should walk out there and offer people a pair of Zennies in exchange for whatever they're wearing. Maybe two pairs of Zennies just to sweeten the pot. Yeah. See if they'll take it up. Two Let's is better than one. Let's go to Agarwal first. Yeah. He, he might take us up on that. I don't know. He's got that SoCal <laughs> chic. I'm, I haven't looked at the Zenny frames. Maybe I should get on online and see if we can get a few ordered. Katz opened with two sevens, runs into a three bet from the chip leader's button. Ace queen suited for Reardon. He just lets go of the sevens. Those are weird ones chips. to play post flop out of position. Just go all in. He folds. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, Going all in and having him fold sounds even better. Yeah, I mean, about 75% chance that would have worked. Yeah, the guy's got ace nine offsuit. It's going to work every time. It's true. You think if Katz was on the short stack, he'd be more inclined to play that hand? I mean, if he was the shortest stack, right. maybe not if he, yeah. I mean, the thing is, is as you mentioned, especially against the chip leader out of position, it's going to be tough if you're a middling stack to try to go post with a hand like sevens, pretty vulnerable, pretty tough to get to the river cheaply and hope to show down and win. So carry just taking 
the path of uh, least resistance there. Winter's not tempted by the button, but I I, you know, cream tea and a Pellegrino. every Thank time it, it feels like he's like, just get me in there, put me in, coach. The two of us. All right, I got to look. Hold on. There so is a, a look of consternation, almost like I will check to my leader. He's gonna explode. He's just gonna take that whole stack <laughs> and just crap, slam it in into crap. the middle and go. I'm all in. <laughs> Ten nine six off suit here. Limp blind versus blind between Agarwal and Cats. Two pair for carry. Middle pair. Okay for Anuj, both of them check. But we've seen that before, you know, the person that just sits there patiently, patiently for hours, and all of a sudden, all in, roll over, 8-3 off. Oh, Feel are Feel you referring to Phil Hellmuth? Who? <laughs> <laughs> High stakes duel moment with 8-3? Give me some action. That was 8-3 suited, Ali. Oh, forgive me. Right, I need a Miracle miracle River dealer. All that nuance. 40k bet on the turn from Agarwal. Got called by Katz. King on the end now. An unimproved Anuj checks. And now Katz has to come up with a number into this 140 that feels like it's going to get paid. Ten percent off sale. Ninety thousand. I mean, who could resist a discount? But. Agarwal, not with too much of a hand. Having the jack does help a little bit. I wonder what Anuj is going to make of some of the, the table talk there at a carry. You know, it can be a bit polarizing. There are guys who, when they start to show a card or start to talk, it's almost always with the intention of getting you to fold a hand that's, that's a winner. And then there are those for whom it's an attempt to get paid off. And it's the latter on this occasion as Agarwal Wants to take Your a peek. Your crap was better than his crap. My crap, well, maybe not. I don't think it was better in the beginning. What? Oh, well, is that? Up, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. A pre. Oh, OK. I OK. Like, oh, that could have been similar. You yeah, know, Carrie's yeah, uh, one of those players that yeah, I feel like is teas. actually pretty balanced with their table talk. There's not a no lot sugar. of people that could pull it off. Thank you. But uh, all the times I've played with Carrie, he has been able to not give too much away when he goes for speech play. Oh my gosh, and I'm doubling up on you. My fault. You've certainly seen the evolution of Kerry as a player since you first started playing with him years back on the circuit to now. And I think the fact that he is consistently no putting Thank himself you. into the toughest fields out there and paying attention to what's happening the around Rick him. Special. He's learned through osmosis. Ice green tea. <laughs> three pitchers. Yeah, that guy just always has a pitcher of green tea behind him. It's amazing. Which I like to eat. Be a lot healthier than Diet Coke. Yeah, it sure would be, yeah. Yeah, you need to get off that, carry. You're a healthy guy. You still got your health, your good looks. You can't be slamming Diet Cokes every day. You got to get off that. That's, uh, I like the aspartame. It tastes good. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I remember playing with Jakun at a table before and just being very embarrassed to eat anything yeah, or sure. drink Hair anything yeah. in Feels front great, of him. But, you know. I just can't find a good substitute. Uh, Did you just say like Jakun for heroin? Yeah, that's no. what people, people <laughs> call him Yeah, you know, I don't first think there's much out there. I think the poker community days. thinks heroin's healthier than Diet Com Coke. Combined? Oh, I know <laughs> how we got there. <laughs> Maho. The high stakes community. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like it's a, that's a pretty healthy like a Renaissance line. reference yeah, to yeah. a lady it of the funny. evening. Was, we were out passing football yesterday. It was like everybody. Hello, could Maho. Throw. Was like, How are you? On? That was dangerous. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was. I heard a lady got hurt the first day. Somebody whacked a lady with a football. That didn't happen yesterday. Uh, all right, I have to. I'm gonna have have top of the. I have to have a premium hand to open your blind. There's three betting so much. That's not, no. Okay. Sub premium. The 7 5. Cool. So you know what's funny? What would you have that hand? I'm, I'm going to see it soon enough. I already told you, Kerry. Oh, you think you had Ace Knight off? Yeah, yeah. Jason knows what everybody has. He uh, calls it out after every hand. As much as I'm sure Reardon would prefer to be on Jason's well left until it shows. than on his right. 
it's no easy feat having to play these blind versus blind point. pots with, with Jason, and he's been pretty sticky and super competent, obviously. No. Not a position. Not at all. You knew what I had this time. I didn't hear it. Nothing. It's almost like I'd rather be two seats to his left. And Rita knows that there will today. be trips. quite a few scenarios where the button's going to fold, and I'm just dead. I had he will have to be in these trips. BBB spots just because he is the biggest Suited stack trips. in the big blind, and people are not going to be opening light. And Pretty so strong. it can't be comfortable it's because more fun this when will you have continue. It. There's days where you're just sitting here and you have jack 10 suited every hand and it just comes five, six, four. How do you think I got here? Makes it easier. <laughs> it's fun having it, isn't it? <laughs> no doubt about that. Yeah, you took out the champ. One card to go. Short decked him. Boom. Yeah, short decked him. Reardon, by the way, is I'm coming off of one hell of a U.S. poker <laughs> open. <Maria. laughs> Hanging out. Four <laughs> caches. One event number four, Nothing, the tried 10K to end Big me Bet Mix. Well, you got me off a huge hand the one time. And then Alex tried to end me. 40? 40. I didn't try. I'm just, I'm just here behaving myself, man. It's fair. Picked up almost 300K in prize it money. It wasn't like a, a conscious effort. Yeah. yeah. I just ripped into your aces, so you're like, okay. Coons King 10 suited awaits Thomas Winter's decision from the big with ace deuce off. 10 seconds. Call. Thomas calls. And out flops the King 10. Backdoor diamonds, a wheel draw, and bottom pair checks it. I'm appreciating that level change now. Coon bets 25 and a snap call from <laughs> Winters, which <laughs> certainly <laughs> isn't going to be dog. lost on Jason, <laughs> exactly. who has to assume Thomas has. Do we implement that early enough? Or either a small <laughs> overpair or some <laughs> meaningful piece of this flop. Event. This event, I mean. Winters checks after picking up the nut he flush checked, draw. Yeah, Coon has hit the 10. A very interesting turn card here. Jason doesn't want to bet it. Content to check back, and now Winter's unimproved on the river. One sixty in the middle. Check. Check. Winters tries to get to showdown with this check, and that might make. Jason feel comfortable to bet for value, but it would be understandable if he doesn't. Obviously, there will be some traps in winters of some had. check raises <laughs> that contain Unreal. nutted hands, but still, I think with this particular sizing from Jason can definitely get called by worse, obviously. Thomas has the genuine crazy, look. If I don't beat Ali in that hand, he's chip winner going to the final table. <laughs> of a man for whom nothing has come easy so far at this final table. You might have denied him the title. It's for good reason. If he wins this one.